Um, we put two boxes on the table. And one of them was for things he keeps, and the other one was for things that need to be recycled or thrown out. The box for the things that needs to be recycled or thrown out had to be filled twice for every time the other one gets filled. That way, we could go through the stuff slowly. As we worked, we talked. He told me he migrated from um, Eastern Europe to Australia. He was a polisher, he was um, a handyman, he did things. And when, as we talked, he told me that he was doing things for the people around him that were living in the same office of housing property. But that recently, his health and the amount of stuff he has actually stopped him doing that. Sure, he had the things that they needed, but they were buried so deep under all the other stuff, he couldn't reach it. And if he couldn't reach it, he couldn't help the people that were coming to him for the handyman sort of that he was. And the more I learned about him, the more I understood that we're missing the mark. All the people that were coming to him wanted the stuff gone, but did not take account of him, of his life, of what he wanted to do, what he still could do for the other people in the neighborhood. And as he talked about it, he also remembered that those are the things that he liked doing. In the second and third sessions, the work became faster. Um, he was excited about discovering stuff that he thought he lost amongst the layers that he thought reminded him of stuff that happened. By the last session, as we cleared most of the stuff that needed to be cleared, he started getting his reputation back in the neighborhood. He started to get his um, clients back, things that people that wanted a couple of things done. And I saw the way he relaxed. I saw the way he moved into his community again. And at that point, there was nothing else for me to do. So we invited the Office of Housing back. They paraded through the place with us, made their assessment, congratulated him on being off the eviction list for the first time in four years. And we ended up celebrating. But I think we all celebrated different things. The Office of Housing celebrated that he was off the eviction list and they actually didn't want to evict him. So for them, that was good. But he celebrated his life coming back, his life in the community coming back. I think what he celebrated is worth celebrating. And for me, it was, um, it was important to have that celebration at the end, as well as appreciate him and watch him again bloom in the community. The deepest dream of ABCD is that more and more people can come to see truly that there is no one we don't need and that a community without a place for everyone is a place for no one. The word leadership is banded around a lot. We make assumptions that we understand what we mean by leadership or being a leader. Even when you read many of the books specifically written on leadership, they don't often define it or define it halfway through the book. I want you to take a couple of minutes now to discuss what leadership and being a good leader means to you. A leader is a dealer in hope, Napoleon. Leaders don't create leaders, they create more leaders, Tom Peters. A leader's task is to open doors and windows, John Gardner. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more and become more, you are a leader, John Quincy Adams. I'm sure many of you have heard of Gandhi. Gandhi, as a young lawyer, found himself in South Africa, where he helped South Africans with a subcontinental background to gain political and human rights. On his return to India, he hastened the fall of the British Empire 
and was instrumental in the establishment of an independent India and Pakistan. Gandhi is acknowledged as one of the great leaders of the 20th century. Yet, he never held a position of authority. He was never the president of a country or the head of a social or political party. You don't have to be in a position of authority, a prime minister, a CEO, a manager or a minister to exercise leadership. Gandhi had followers and was able to get things done. The particular type of leader I would like to discuss now are what we call connector leaders. These are people who exist in every community who may or may not be in positions of authority, but are respected by other community members and are able to mobilise people and other resources. Alinsky, the famous American civil rights activist, said that people who don't have followers aren't leaders, they're just a person with an opinion. John McKnight says connector leaders often have the following characteristics. They are capacity focused, seeing the gifts, potential, interests, skills and contributions of older people and how these strengths could be used to introduce people to community life. They are well connected in community life and use their networks to create opportunities for older people to contribute and be involved in community. They are trusted by community and therefore find opportunities that may not be available to service providers or others not known in the community. They are optimistic about the community's willingness to accept people and therefore expect people to say yes when asked to include a vulnerable person in community activities. Effective community linkers know that for people to be embraced fully in community, they must be able to let go and leave the person to develop new relationships. In your group, take time to explore the connector leaders you know. I think that connector leaders are so important that it's useful to have a short discussion about how you might find connector leaders in your community. One simple rule of thumb that I have is that if two people say, have you spoken to Joe Bloggs, and I speak to them next and ask them who else I should be speaking to. Here's a few things that people have said in other building belonging workshops. Old people are often community connectors. People in the newspapers a lot. Hang around places where your community is. Find people who are on lots of committees. Ask, 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 ask. The reason we've spent so much time exploring connector leaders is that they are one of the great assets of community building projects. They can facilitate the development of relationships, harness people and resources towards the goal of inclusion. So practically speaking, if you want to start to engage the community, you need to find the people who others follow and have access to information and resources in the community. These people are often the place to start. Given the task of rejuvenating a region and the choice of $50 million or $2 million and 20 committed local leaders, we would choose the smaller amount of money and the committed leaders. <laughs>